So far, this year has been somewhat disappointing as far as games go. Like, it was super stacked towards the beginning of it. And now that we're in the middle of the year, like, things are really slowing down. Yeah, and it like, seems like it's going to be super stacked towards the end of it. But, while we're in this lull, we're feeling like this year's a little bit lame. So it got us thinking about the lamest bosses we've ever encountered in gaming. So, Bro Trio is here to talk about our top 10 lame bosses. Now, since it's lame, the lamest of the lame will be number 1. If they're, like, number 10, that's... Kind of lame, but not super lame. So, yeah. know that going in. Ugh. And let's get on with the disappointment. One of the biggest disappointments is when a boss is super hyped up and you're ready to fight it, and then you get to it and it's just like, oh, I, I was expecting a phase two or something like, what? Uh, Proud Claude from Final Fantasy VII was one of those. Funny yeah. name. Because you're like halfway through the game. You're, you know, kicking Almost ass and taking done. names. Yeah, that's right. It's toward the you end. You are storming Midgar. That's making right. your way back into it. The Mako cannon is aimed at the weapons and at like Junon or some shit. They're yeah. going to destroy the world. And you're like... We're stopping it. And then and then they're just like, Aha! I'm going to release Proud Claude to stop you. And you're just like, Oh, previously these guys have had pretty tough bosses. I'm excited to fight this thing. Yeah, I think it's piloted by like Heidegger and uh, the lady in the red dress. Yeah. Elena? And they, yeah, no, that's no, one of the not Turks. Elena. I forget her name. It's like yeah. Scarlet or something weird. But they've been there at Shinra douchebag since the beginning. And it's oh, just yeah. like... And like the... Eh. Kinda. Yeah, it's just a, a fight. It distracts you for a little while. Maybe that was the whole point of it, but you just kind of fight it. It's done, and then you move on, and it's very forgettable. But the lead up to it, it was just like, oh, this is going to be cool. This is going to be fun. I haven't been challenged in a while. Oh, it's over. A boss battle needs to be exciting, it needs to be challenging, and it needs to amp you up. <sighs> These are all qualities that don't apply to sniper battles. And <laughs> we're going to talk about Metal Gear Solid here. We could talk about Quiet, or we could talk about the end. We're going to talk about the end because Quiet is a little more it's better, maybe just due to the gameplay yeah, engine. Sniper or... Wolf was kind of cool. Like that was Sniper Wolf was, yeah. was kind of cool because that, that was one corridor. The end, it's like an entire forest. But the end does get some bonus points. That's why he's only number nine because the end from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater has so many different ways that you can <laughs> kill him before doing the fight that it just like bumps him up because like you can snipe him from like a very early point because he's just this, he's basically a dead old man that comes yeah. back to life to snipe people and he like becomes so still that he photosynthesizes or some bullshit and it, it's metal gear you can even <laughs> stop machines. playing the game and wait two weeks and then since he's so old he'll die from old age <laughs> or you can just go into your system clock and set the time forward to kill him that way yeah but if you actually fight him the real way he is pretty lame because it's exactly what you would think a sniper battle would be you peep your head out sniped you got to look for the glint off of his scope and then go find him and then if you get spotted during any of that he'll bolt like he's sonic the hedgehog like how is this old man that <laughs> fast and it's just it's okay for a sniper battle like but ultimately in Metal Gear, like, you're going up against the Russians and everything, and it just is kind of lame. From the beginning of Skyrim, they were hyping up Alduin as this destroyer dragon god, and I guess he was, but at the end of the game, you just kind of fight another dragon. That's the main thing. Like, I liked fighting all the dragons, but I fought a hundred of these things, and then the final boss is just another one of these. I don't really have too much to say outside of that. The setting was cool. It was cool. It was happening. You you got a bunch of warrior ghosts from Valhalla to fight this dragon with you. Oh. That was pretty cool. But it's just a dragon. It's just another <laughs> dragon. We've already killed 250 of these things. 
Oh, just add one more to the pile. We'll just call this one a different name. Lazarevich from Uncharted 2 is a really cool villain. I thought he was a very entertaining villain. He, I liked his accent. I liked how intimidating he was. He had his own private army, but then he drinks some blue jelly and turns immortal. And you can't really kill him, and that's kind of cool. And I like how he's like talking shit as he's charging at you. Yeah, but um, you just have to blow up these nasty like zits on these trees that like <laughs> full of the blue stuff. Yeah, and they then, explode and hurt him. Then they explode it. and hurt him, and then at the end he gets beat to death by a bunch of blue gorilla people or whatever. It, Uncharted's <laughs> weird, but yeah. it didn't make for a fun boss fight just having this invincible man chase you while you shoot tree zits. You know a boss is lame when the very next game in the series calls it out. Oh, Borderlands had one of those. The Destroyer. Like, it It was another one kind of like Proud Clod. It was led up to be something cool. You thought it was going to be awesome. This girl, I uh, forget her name, that may or may not have been a siren. That's a whole other uh, thing. Commandant Steel. Yeah. Like, she's been messing with you this whole game about this Destroyer that she's going to unleash. She unleashes it. Gets randomly impaled by a tentacle, and you're like, oh man, I don't get to fight her. I wanted to fight her. And then this thing comes out of the cave, and giant it's a tentacle monster with a teeth. giant eyeball. Mike Wazowski over there, like, uh. And, like, huh. the vault was led up to yeah. so much for Borderlands 1. Yeah. And, and I the other subsequent Borderlands, actually. Like, but. <laughs> I had a little bit of trouble with it my first time because I was a little underleveled and I didn't have the kind of weaponry to take that thing out. But that's it. I had a little bit of trouble with what was supposed to be the final boss. And it's a blob, so it doesn't move or do anything. Yeah, you, you might just swipe some tentacles and shoot eye lasers. You just shoot it in the eye. Yeah, you just like, you shoot it in the giant eye. Yeah. Might as well be like a Legend of Zelda, Legend of Zelda like, like boss. Yeah. And then you blow it up, it spits out a couple of guns, normally not even anything good, and that's it. You're done. Good job. Hunting monsters is one of the coolest things you can ever do in a video game, and a game based around them is Monster Hunter, and it does not just point in that aspect. You get these larger than alive, crazy ass dragons that you get to plow through with 16 different weapon types. How do you top that? You get this huge ass dragon, Zora Magdaros from Monster Hunter World. It's like the he's coolest a, name. He's a mountain yeah. of a dragon. And you have to fight him with siege weapons and that's okay. It's yeah. okay at best. And like it's not bad, I just, but... I wanted to fight the mountain. <laughs> And then you go to the mountain, <laughs> and that's when it gets even lamer, because not only do you not get to do the siege weapons where you are fighting the mountain with, like, ballistas and shit, now you're on it, and you're basically a flea, and you go fight these little rocks that Zora Magdaros is, like, nerve endings or some shit, and you just yeah. hit on this rock... And that's it. Every now and then, Nur Higante might swoop in because yeah. he's like the immune system of Zora Magdaros, basically, and you gotta fight him. He's fun. Yeah. He Actual was cool. Zora Magdaros is not because you can hit a rock in Minecraft. Why would I want to do that in Monster Hunter? Aaron mentioned Zelda earlier about shooting him in the eyeballs. To, th to this guy's credit, he doesn't have any eyeballs. You have to hit his weird jiggly toes instead. <laughs> We're talking about the Imprison from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Now, if it was just the final Imprison fight where he's got arms and he's flying and crap. And a halo. And a halo. Yeah. That may not, and you're getting shot out from Groose out of, the, out of his catapult. The, he may not have made this list at all. Yeah, but the fact that, that, that he was the only one. three freaking times... And it's never really that fun. Like, even the Groose one, it's only fun when Groose shoots you out of the catapult. The rest can f*** off. But <laughs> it just sucks, and it brings the pace of the game to a f crawl. And that is one, that's one of the reasons that I 
sort of dread replaying Skyward Sword is because I know I'm in for three in prison fights, and I go ahead and play it anyway because I love Skyward Sword, but every time that imprisoned is just in the back of my mind, I know he's coming, and I'm gonna hate it every time. The lamest of the flame. We have <laughs> Flame Hyrenard from Mega Man X7. Now, he's high up on this list due to his aesthetics. Pretty much only because fire bosses are normally some of the coolest bosses, ironically, in Mega Man X. And hyenas are really cool because they're these weird ass dogs that are kind of like better, more feral dogs than like a jackal or some shit. And they laugh. So that's yeah. already cool. Ugh. But, ugh. X7 is one, a piece of shit, anyways. And then you get the cool flame dog feral aspect of it and it's it's not even any better like okay this f***er doesn't do anything hyena based you fight him on yeah. a giant ass camel walking through the lava yeah. what the f and like he doesn't he, even laugh at you does he no not really he keeps saying he has like three bits of, <laughs> of flame, dialogue that's it flame high in art over here just sucks he says burn to the ground burn to the ground burn to the ground you're gonna burn, you're gonna burn, and that that's it. Like, they don't swap up his dialogue, and then this f***er goes a step further and clones himself like hyenas are yeah. known to do, and it only amps up the repetitive yeah, voice. they're all like, talking. They're all saying that, uh... Not to mention, yeah. what the f*** is a hyenard? In my opinion, one of the biggest sins a game company can do is taking a cool boss, giving them a new form, and the new form sucks. Gears of War did that with the Brumac, because you fight a regular Brumac, it's tough, it's intense, it's scary as hell. You get to ride one in Gears of War 2, and you are scary, you're big, you're intense, you're... Like, it's so cool. But then you walk through some... Uh, emulsion. Emulsion, thank you. I was going to call it lava, but I know it's not lava. And then he starts getting goopy and tentacly, and you're just like, Oh, shit. This is about to be the like the big ending boss of the game. Oh, my God. And then you get in the, the helicopter. And it's just like, Hey, uh, uh, shoot him a little. Not even with Here, here's, here's a hammer of dawn. Just shoot him three times. Maybe four, I don't remember, but he does he yeah. doesn't move. I don't even know if he attacks you. I can't he remember. He does, but as long as you just but, hold down the right trigger, even on insane, you'll yeah, be fine. That's what I was gonna say. Like on insane difficulty, it's still just one, two, three. Alright. Man, you wanna talk about a lot of lead up to something cool? Friggin' Lucian from Fable 2. He started out the game pretty cool. Like, I can't remember. Was he gonna adopt you? Uh, something yeah, weird. Something he was gonna like adopt that. you and your sister, and then he put you in a circle and was like, well, now it's time for kid murder. And he yeah. kills your sibling and throws you out of the window, and then now your Fable 2 journey starts. You gotta kill this f So he's... At, the whole game, he's being mentioned, or you hear him. He's got a very, he's got a very cool sounding voice. He was a pretty good villain, like Lazarevich before him, but it just ends by shooting him in the face, and that's it. And if you don't do it, the hero skill will. Yeah, Reaver. Yeah. And just... he's and he kidnapped all your friends you made throughout the game. You made friends with the hero of wills, the hero of strength, and the hero of skill. And you're doing this assault on the fucking spire that he built to do whatever I can't, grant a wish or something. And uh, he killed your dog. He killed all your families because I had several because I'm a bastard on Fable. <laughs> but he killed your dog, killed all your wives and kids and husbands and whatever. And you do this cool like battle through the spire and then it ends with him absorbing all the skills of all the heroes. And I thought it was going to be a really cool fight. Because he was going to be this super-powered demigod of a hero. Kind of. I thought it was going to be like Jack of Blades in Fable yeah, 1. Yeah. Jack of Blades was awesome. And then you kill him, and you play the expansion, and you kill him as a dragon. Jack of Blades was really cool, but this guy just sucks. He's just, like, absorbing him, and then 
he's not and then he goes on a monologue and i wanted to listen to it at least because <laughs> he had a cool voice like i said he's going on a cool monologue and if you don't shoot him in the face he just gets shot in the face and it's a big waste of time it sucks like why even have this just let me fight him. Like, even if it's bad, I guess, just let me fight him. Like, he could have just been, like, as easy as... You could have turned him into a hob and fought a hob. <laughs> yeah, that would have been better been, somehow. it would have been much yeah. more satisfying than him just getting shot in the face by you or someone else. So those are our picks for the top 10 lamest bosses. We normally don't do too many negative videos on this channel, but we wanted to switch it up a little bit and get some bitching out. And, I mean, there were several that you just gunned down an old man on this list. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you have any old men that you gunned down and didn't like, or other bosses you didn't like, let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Bro Trio so you can get more of these good top tens coming your way. And don't forget to follow us and support us on Patreon, where you get to see every one of the Bro Trio's individual lists. So you can see where I rank stuff, where Scotty ranks stuff where Aaron ranks stuff get to know the bro tree a little bit better for these videos and everything so catch y'all next time